704 right now, and with October coming to an end, we continue to stress the importance of Breast Cancer Awareness Month and where you can go for help. Dallas Ontiveros joins us from IAEA with more details. Morning, Dallas. Good morning, Chris. And still hanging out with us is our friend Aster Raquel, who is a breast cancer survivor and Pearl City resident. Good morning, Aster. Thanks so much for being with us, sharing your journey. We find it so admirable and very brave of you, truly. Thank you, Dallas. So let's catch people up. You never had any sort of history in your immediate family of breast cancer. You said your aunt did have breast cancer, though, and you had to live with breast cancer for seven months until July 2020 in the midst of a pandemic, which sounds very scary. So with all that being said, how was your family a support system for you? What did you do to really get through this day by day on this journey? You know, thankfully, I've been blessed with a very supportive husband and two kids, and um, th they were my biggest supporter and my biggest cheerleader, and I've also had a big support system from um, my work family, my church family, and um, definitely my faith helped me through it all and through those dark valleys. Uh, my faith helped me to um, move my focus away from my fears and just focus on the joyful things in life. Amen. Amen to that, truly. But, you know, when you found out you were diagnosed with breast cancer, who did you first tell? I first told my husband because my, the first thing that came to mind was our kids. You know, they were only four and six years, years old at that time. And I was very scared that I was going to be there for my kids. I wanted to grow old with them and watch them graduate high school. And just the fear of the, un, um, the unknown of the, about the future was, was scary. So I definitely told my husband first. You have a son and a daughter. How did you have this conversation with them? Because that can't be easy for both sides to understand this? It wasn't easy. It was very difficult. Uh, thankfully, the nurses here at Polymomi helped me navigate, navigate through um, having that difficult conversation with them. Um, they helped me to, um, you know, process and help my son because after chemotherapy, after my first round, I lost my hair and I was bald and my kids were having a difficult time with it especially my son so they helped me to reminded me that you know to celebrate life and celebrate every moments of it so we uh, celebrated with having um uh, ice, ice cream party ice cream health you know I, I can't imagine what you lived through, you know, the, within those seven months. Like you said, day by day, your faith was there for you a lot. The team here at Polymomi as well, your work family, your church. Is there something that you want to share with our viewers now that you wish you would have known back then before when it came to breast cancer? Because like you said, you didn't have any family of history, any, any family history in your immediate family. So it was a shock to you. Yes, you know, uh, th this cancer journey has been very, very difficult. It's one of the most challenging seasons. Um, I have some many ups and downs. Um, even till now, um, as even though I'm completed with my, my active treatments, I still go through those waves of emotions. And um, to those who are still going through it or just recently diagnosed, um, just know that you will have ups and downs. You'll have good days and bad days, and that's okay. Um, there will be moments where you just want to cry, and that's okay too. And, um, and lastly, though, um, I guess the most important thing is um, early screening, um, doing your monthly breast exam, because as early detection saves lives, and it definitely saved mine. Thank you so much, Aster, for just sharing your story with us. We find it so admirable. It's so important for people to know, especially people who are living with breast cancer, who have that fear or anxiety, and who are a survivor, just like yourself. So we appreciate your time. Thank you so much, Dallas. And if you want some more details about everything that we've covered this morning, you can visit our website at kh12.com. But we are continuing the conversation in this hour, so make sure you stay with us here on Wake Up Today. Reporting here on IAEA, Dallas Navarro's KH12 News, working for Hawaii. Thank you, Dallas. And schedule that mammogram this yep. year if you haven't done so already. And thank you to Esther for sharing her story. Mm -hmm.